Let's read this question. Madhu deposits 10,000 rupees at 20% per annum compounded quarterly. Okay, I am collecting data from this question. 10,000 is important. 20% the interest rate is important. And then how often it's compounded? Compounded quarterly. This is like really important. And then what's the question? Okay, so what is the total amount and the interest she gets after 6 months? Okay, so after 6 months I need to find how much this 10,000 will become. Now I know that uh, compound interest is or a compound interest problem is just a percentage change problem in disguise. So uh, let me do this. My step one then is just to convert this compound interest problem into a percentage change, percentage change problem. Convert to percentage change problem. Convert to percentage change problem. That's it. That's my uh, first step. And that's probably the most important step because after that, the problem is not, not compound interest anymore. So I need to first find out how much money should I start with. How much am I starting with? How much is the amount I start with? And that's easy. That's 10,000. That's given over here. So that's the amount you begin with. Now, what's your next question? Okay, by what percentage should I increase this 10,000? By what percent? By what percent are you increasing? And the answer to that is not straightforward. It's not 20%. Because this is 20% per annum compounded quarterly. Now, the moment I read this word, quarterly, I know in my mind that I want everything in terms of quarters now. Quarter is my unit. That's the time at which I'm going to find the interest and add it back. So I want everything in terms of quarters. So I look here. This is 20% per quarter. No, it's not. It's 20% per annum. So I need to find what is the interest rate per quarter. So I have 20% every year, but a year has four quarters. So if I divide by four, I'll get the interest rate per quarter and that's going to be equal to 5. So this is my interest rate. I have to increase by 5% every quarter. Okay, so I'm, I'm done or no, I have one more step. How many times should I do it? Because this final, uh, how, after how many days I need to find the amount is just another way of asking how many times you should increase this 10,000 by 5%. So let's do that. How many times? Now, how many times? Six months doesn't tell me how many times very directly, but if you look here, it's compounded quarterly. And like I said, quarter is now our unit for everything. So how many quarters are there in six months? That's all I care about. So how many times should I increase? Twice, right? Because there are two quarters in six months. So that's it. I have my two quarters. So I have two times. We have succeeded. 90% of our problem is solved in the sense that we have now converted this compound interest problem into a very simple question of can you increase 10,000 by 5% two times? Increase it once and then increase it once again and whatever answer you get will be your amount. So step two is to actually do this. To actually do this and find that amount. So let's look at step number two. Step two is uh, find this, right? So increase 10,000 Increase 10,000 by 5% two times. By 5% twice. Percent twice. Now there are a few ways to do this and depending on what's your favorite way to deal with percentages, you can do it. So step two. Let's try. We're going to do two methods. So let's actually have a line that separates these two methods. So the first way, the obvious way to do this is Find 5% of 10,000 and add it to 10,000. That will increase 10,000 by 5% once, right? So what is 5% of 10,000? 5% of 10,000. Now the way I like to think about it is I like to ask what is 1% of 10,000? Now that gives me what is 1% of 10,000? That's 10,000 divided by 100. If I remove these two zeros, I get 100. 100 is 1%. I want 5%. So that's 5 times 100 or 500. So that's 5% 5 of 10,000. Increase 10,000 by that. So I just have to add 500 to 10,000. So I have 10,000, 10,000, yeah, four zeros plus um, 500 plus 500. That gives me 10,500 equals 10,500. Now, what is this? 
this is my amount after increasing by 5% once, right? So we're going to call it once. After doing it once, I have this, but I want to do it twice. So now for the second time, what should I do? I have to find 5% of not 10,000, but 10,500 because I have to increase this number by 5% now. So let's do that. 10500. Zero, zero, zero. Now what is this equal to? I again, I mean, you can do 5 by 100 into this. And if you do that, exactly what you'll get is 5 by 100. This 100 will be cancelled with that. But in other words, 1% of this number is 105, right? And then 5 times that will be 105 into 5, which is 100 times 5 is 500. And then 5 times 5 is 25. So 500 plus 25. You can verify this. But I think that you can also start practicing doing these kinds of questions in your head because it's possible to do them. And now you can find the amount after doing it twice. Because that's just going to be this number plus this number. So I'm going to say twice. After increasing by 5% twice, you'll get this plus this, which is 10500 plus 525. And again, you can uh, do this. I'm going to try and do this in my head. What I will do is, because I'm able to see 10,500 plus 525, I'll take this 500 part alone. So 10,500 plus 500 will be 11,000. I have a 25 remaining. So it's 11,025. 11,025. 11,025. Sometimes the eraser doesn't work. 11,025. Now, what is this number? This is the amount after increasing 10,000 by 5% twice. Right? That's exactly what we wanted. That's what we wanted, actually. That's the amount that we will have after Six months. This is the answer to the question. And we have it. Now, this is the most intuitive and also the simple way to do the problem, but it can get tedious if this number is large. Instead of, say, six months, if you had said two years, then two years has eight quarters. So you do that eight times, and this can get really long. But you may ask a question. You may ask, hey, I only want to know what the final answer is. Why am I calculating all these middle answers? And that's a great question. If you want to not calculate all these middle answers, there's a way to do this. And let's look at that. It's a much quicker way. But to do that, let's pause for a moment and just take a look at percentage change. Now, we've learned this before, but let's take a look, quick look at it again. If I have any number, let's forget 10,000. If I have any number, I'm going to call it X. And if I want to increase it by 5%, what should I do? I have to find 5% and add it. That's what you did here. So what is 5% of this number X? That's just 5 by 100 into x, right? Now to increase this by 5%, I just have to add these two numbers. Yeah, and this works for any number. And no matter what this x is, you can take it out common, right? You can take it out and write this whole thing this way. So there's going to be 1 over here, 1 plus 5 by 100, right? And you know that you can write this if you just take this 100 away. Basically, you're taking the entire denominator to be 100. If you do that, then you can write this as x into 105 by 100. 105, 105 by 100. And if this looks like a lot of work, we're doing this so that we don't do work later. We're doing all this work before. So this can be simplified even more if I divide the numerator and denominator by 5. So I get 21 divided by 20. Now pause over here and notice where did we start with? This number. What is this number? This is x increased by 5%. x increased by 5% is this entire number. Just simplify and simplify, you get this number. This is also x increased by 5%, but this is beautiful. This is just a product. This is just something multiplied by x. This is a little bit more complicated than that. So what this shows is increasing a number x by 5% is exactly the same as multiplying it by 21 by 20. Now multiplication is much easier than this thing called increasing by some percentage, whatever, right? So this is a much more beautiful and much more useful result. So let's keep this. Let's take this and let's forget these uh, the rest of what we did here and we only care about this result as we go forward. So let's actually forget about the rest and let's say that we have this alone with us. Let's take it over here and uh, let's start looking at this once again. What does this say? Multiply a number by 21 by 20 and, you, and you've increased it by 5%. How many times though? Once. 
That's it. Once. What should I do? Take whatever my number is. I don't care that it's 10,000. It could have been anything. But take that number. Take that 10,000. Multiply it by 21 by 20. If you do calculate this, if you're really suspicious, and if you do calculate this, this will be equal to 10,500. But you're right. Why are we calculating it? Let it be this way. So what should I do for twice? I don't care what this x is, right? So this x can either be 10,000 or this entire number. I don't care. But if I multiply this entire number by 21 by 20 again, I will get 5% once more. I'll increase it by 5% once more. That's exactly what I need to do. I need to start with this number, the entire number. So 10,000 into 21 by 20. That's the number I'm starting with. And I have to increase this number by 5%. So this is my new x. Increase it by 5% just means multiply this entire number by 21 by 20. Now you can see that this scales very, very, very well. So thrice multiplied by 21 by, 21 by 20 again, four times again. And you do this, say, for example, even 20 years, writing it will be super easy. 10,000 multiplied by 21 by 20, 20 times. Multiply 20 times or to the power 20, if you want to write it that way. But that's it. So you can see over here that when the numbers become large, this method becomes more useful. So amount after after six months. You know that this answer and the previous answer has to be same, but I would like you to be more suspicious. So let's actually calculate this. So how would I do this? I would probably take away these zeros first. I'll just divide the numerator and denominator by these, these zeros. To be by these tens, you can't divide by zero. And then I would just find the product of these two, 21 into 21, that's 441, that's 21 squared. Um, yeah, you don't have to remember it, I just happened to. So 441 into 100, so 44100. 0, 0. So I have 441 times 100 divided by 2 times 2, which is 4, divided by 4. And that is equal to, if I take this out, it's 1, 1, and then I have nothing over here, so 0, and then in 10 it goes twice, and then again um, I have 2 with me, and then so in 20 it goes 5 times. So I have 11,025, which is exactly what I expected to get, 11,025, the answer is the same. And these are broadly the two methods that you'll always use in compound interest. If the number is really small, you'll just be like, you'll do this. But in fact, almost always you'll do this, because once you understand why this works, this is just a better method, just a faster method every single time. And uh, you may also notice that if you just take some time, you can show that this, what we're doing here, is exactly the same as what you may have seen otherwise, which is P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power N. Uh, you can take some time to show this to yourself. This P is basically the amount we start with. R is our percentage. Um, R by 100 plus 1 is what we did over here to get this 21 by 20. And depending on the number of years, you get this power N. Now, we're almost done. There's only one more step, finding the interest. Now, how do you find the interest? You have the amount, you have the principal, just subtract the principal from the, subtract the principal from the amount. That's right, principal from the amount, and then you get the answer. So let's do that. So step number three. Step three, find interest. And that is just going to be equal to 11025, 11,025 minus my original uh, principal, and that's going to give me, it's 1,025. And you can uh, do the subtraction to verify this. Uh, so 1,025 is the interest that I will have. And notice that in compound interest, finding the amount is easier. You first find the amount and then subtract the principal to get the interest. You may remember that in simple interest, it's actually easier to calculate the interest. You first find the interest and then you add it to the principal to find the total amount. Also, notice that we've taken 10,000 here, so it may look like the numbers were really simple, but no matter what this number was, the method remains exactly the same. What are the steps? Convert to a percentage problem. Let's just go back and summarize. So convert the problem to a percentage change problem. Read this question and do that. Pay particular attention to the what's the frequency in which it's compounded. Step number two, do the math. Actually do that percentage change problem. And then finally, find the interest. And that's it.